Now, experts are meeting today to discuss health challenges faced by BRICS countries and the rest of the African continent. Nonolux Group is hosting an international health seminar which seeks to address prevention and control of non-communicable diseases. The seminar is also a build-up to the BRICS summit to be hosted in South Africa later this year. Nonolux Group COO Anton Aransa joins us now. Good morning to you and thank you so much for your time. Just the, in terms of South Africa being the host to a very critical uh, summit around health issues and preventable diseases as we see with the outbreak of cholera in Hammanskwal. What are the objectives uh, and the tangible outcomes that you anticipate? Good morning. Yeah. Uh, good morning to you, Cindy. So uh, the, I, th I think before responding to your, to your question around outcomes, I think it's important to uh, just give some context uh, around uh, the seminar and the seminar series and why Numelox has chosen to um, initiate this, for us, a very important intervention. So um, say what you want about BRICS, the merits or demerits of that. Uh, the, the world and the globe is in a, in a world-shifting moment. We're finding that in terms of uh, global economy, global population, um, the, 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 the bulk and the shift is moving uh, significantly to, uh, to the global south. The majority of our populations are within the BRICS communities. Um, the latest Bloomberg reports show uh, that global GDP um, is going to uh, be moving significantly from G7 to, to these five uh, countries. And no doubt, uh, subsequent to August, uh, that list of five countries are likely to be expanded. So uh, for us, however, uh, notwithstanding the rapid strides that have been made in respect of BRICS in terms of growth, investment and infrastructure, there has been this big concern that in terms of health, health provision uh, and our um, access to primary health care, many of these countries, and I not only includes BRICS, but also Africa, there's been a, a, a lag in terms of uh, the spend toward uh, ultimately our goal of universal health care and access of quality health care to all of the citizens, not only of South Africa, Africa, but also the BRICS communities. And hence um, our, uh, our looking to initiate um, this uh, seminar series. Coming back to your question very quickly. Yes, there's, uh, we, the, given the, 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 the time uh, that we've had uh, leading up to, to August and the BRIC Summit, we were somewhat limited to the kind of uh, sessions that we were able to have. Um, and yes, at this point in time, cholera is, is pretty much front and center. But the, the situation at this stage, uh, and one looks at it broadly, while communicable diseases such as malaria, TB, HIV, um, and you've mentioned others, uh, are still uh, the biggest concerns in Africa. The statistics show that uh, non-communicable diseases are already leading uh, the cause of death in most regions of the world. Just by way of example, NCDs <clears throat> um, are the cause of death of around 41 million people each year. Um, and of all NCD deaths, importantly, 77% are in low and middle income countries. And here we would include uh, many of the BRICS uh, and almost certainly the majority of African countries. And so for us, um, it does become important that we not only talk about the year and now, uh, but also start looking again in the context of the rapid growth of, uh, of our BRICS nations that in terms of health care and health provision, um, issues such as uh, both communicable but importantly the longer term and the preventable non-communicable diseases uh, are dealt with as a mr, mr. aron so just in the interest of time i just want to jump in there in, in the sense that is when you look at the uh, lack of maintenance around infrastructure access to basic services like water clean water mm. in particular how is south africa playing as an equal partner in the BRICS communities and what is it that we bring to the table if we are not necessarily also um, strong in terms of pharmaceuticals or research and development and ensuring that we are able to take care of our own affairs before even extending to the rest of the world? Look, I think, uh, Cindy, I think these are, it's an important question that you ask. The, 
issue and, and in part this is, is, is it's an aspect that uh, as a private sector initiative or uh, entity it's not one that we can answer completely because I believe that um, really as the private sector we latch on to the initiatives provided and initiated by the state so uh, I, 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 and I believe you you are again drawing to the issue of, of cholera at this point really we, we're looking at basic maintenance here of, of our basic infrastructure um, issues around water quality uh, the maintenance of, of, of our of, of our bulk uh, and our municipal water systems and then of course we uh, from a purely health perspective needing to constantly monitor trends um, and pick up those early warning signs around uh, infections um, the spread of disease and then being able to anticipate and prepare better for these eventualities again um, i do want to come back to the issue of the growth of the rapid growth of urbanization and our infrastructure not being able to keep abreast with what has been happening not only in south africa but in fact the story of south africa has been the story of africa and many developing countries where the growth of our populations um, has completely surpassed the ability of our infrastructure systems to keep abreast and by implication being able to provide our, our citizenry um, with basic water, sanitation, electricity, etc., etc.